What's up guys, Jacob Owens here for the Buff Nerds. We're about to get into Ask JOP episode four. Let's get into it. First question comes from Brett Mendoza. He asks, how do you determine what music videos you use the GH4 for? What determines that is really the size of the budget for the video. If it's a very small, low budget video, we rock with the GH4. If it's something that has more budget and there's more money involved, we can use the Red or the Red Epic. A lot of the times too, if it's something a little more run and gun or last minute, we'll use the GH4 because it's a much smaller camera. There's not as much setup. The battery life's longer. There's there's pros there's pros and cons to it. Um, with um, and there's a lot of pros for doing a lot of run and gun stuff because it is so small. Next question comes from Angel Carrion. He asks, Jacob Owens, I can't afford a GH4 yet, so in the meantime, what lenses would you recommend using a T3i to produce great videos? When I first started shooting with the T2i um, years back, um, I, I just had the kit lens, but the lens I would recommend is getting something with range. So I used the 24 to 70 Canon L series lens because it, it had some focal range to it. You, you could shoot at 24, you could shoot at 50, at 70. There was a wide range um, of focal distances and so you're not stuck with one just focal range. So I would pick a lens that has some good range and is, is good quality glass. Domit the fifth asked Jacob Owens, thanks for doing this for the new JBO video. Are the camera movements with the shoulder rig or handheld in how wide of a lens? Um, I think he's referring to this video here. Um, basically, this one was all handheld with the GH4. Just in my hand, just kind of rocking handheld, and that was really it. Um, I was using the Tokina 11 to 16 millimeter, which is the lens I'm using right now. Um, it's a good lens to get some really wide shots. I'm a really big fan of wide shots. Just in general, I like wide stuff. I like seeing the subject in the location itself. So that was the Tokino 11 to 16. King Rel asked, when artists ask you to think of a video concept, where does your inspiration come from? It can come from a lot of places. It can come from just listening to the song and hearing something in the song that makes me think of something. It can come from me just doing research on, on Google images or, or other videos, finding an image that sparks an idea in my head for that song or video. Um, inspiration comes from all over the place and sometimes it doesn't hit. There's a lot of times where I can't think of an idea for a video and it just, it just doesn't end up happening. Inspiration comes from anywhere. Sometimes it happens like that and sometimes I have to sit with a, a couple days to really think about it. Um, just depends. Sophie Saldana asks, how do you get that high energy camera movement? It looks jerky, yet smooth at the same time, and it's super hard to achieve. Um, basically what I do for that is just to create that high energy, boost up the shutter speed. For any, any video that you know needs a lot of energy or there's a lot of raw edginess to it, I'll boost up the shutter speed to like a 96, to a 120, even sometimes to a 144. And this creates this kind of raw, jittery, high energy camera movement. And then from there, it's just you moving the camera. So there's, there's ways to do it with boosting the shutter speed, creating that jerkiness. And then there's that camera movement itself, knowing when to move to certain points in the beat and just to really emphasize the artist's movements and sounds within the music by just moving the camera. But a way I'll create that high energy is, is boosting up the shutter speed. CHCH asks, what is your biggest inspiration to get where you are now or where you want to be? The biggest inspiration is, is just seeing other people out there doing what I'm doing and, and seeing them grow. And it's, it's dope to see people, friends, colleagues, or people you don't even know, but you've, you've watched for some time do awesome things and, and work on projects and, and grow. And so it's just really inspiration comes from just people around you and knowing that, hey, if they've, they've done it, I could do the same thing. Shinobi Apocalypse asked, how many boxes of Cocoa Puss did you use for that bathtub scene in the Cocoa video? I know I spent over like $350 and the lady at the grocery store looked at me like I was absolutely crazy. Um, she actually, the lady at the front actually asked if I was a doomsday prepper. One kid was walking by in line at me, a little kid, a little kid was walking by and he just stopped and he looked at me and he just goes, is that all for you? <laughs> it was the cutest little thing. 
But uh, I, I don't know, we probably, I mean, I spent like $350 on cereal. It was kind of crazy. Cereal is not cheap, especially when you buy that many. I don't know, there's probably like 30 plus boxes or something. And Itchy Eye Photos asks, how did you achieve the double video look? For the example, Kalik video, Dizzy Wright video, throw those up on the screen. Basically what I did is I shot a green screen. Um, and silhouetted him. So you have the green screen, you have him silhouetted, so he's just a black outline, black silhouette. And then in post, I replaced the green screen with a white background, and I used a, a overlay composite layer to lay another clip inside the black space, his silhouette. And so that's how I created that, that double kind of picture in picture image, video overlay, whatever you want to call it. Evan asks, what is your process of editing, i.e. syncing the picture to the track? Basically, lay the song down, and the first thing I do is line up the take just by not only the, you know, my, my sight, but my, my hearing. So listen and line up the audio of the take with the song, and then I look to make sure it's on sync as well, and then I'll play with it. But once I line it up, I line in that one take, Cut up all the good moments, delete the bad moments, lay the next take over top. Cut out good moments, maybe fill in some of the holes, cut out, cut out the bad moments, delete all the bad moments. So I start just building layer, take by take. I do all performance shots first. Get the entire video, basically one big performance video, and then from there I start going and lacing in the B-roll shots, um, taking parts where it gets maybe a little stale or boring or repetitive, put in a B-roll shot there, B-roll shot there. So. All performance takes first, layer by layer, then I start implementing all the B-roll shots in. Michael McBride asks, would you ever consider doing an internship or letting someone sit in on a set? I let people sit in on sets all the time. Um, you know, I'm, I've, on all my various shoots, I always have people come through that are eager to learn or just wanna be on set or you know, just wanna be involved and help, whatever sort of fashion, whether it's just you know being a PA or, or doing behind the scenes video. Um, I do it all the time. Just email me at bookingjop at gmail.com. Let me know you're interested. And you know, next time you see that I have a shoot coming up, hit me up. Email me, say, hey, I would like to you know, come, come help on the set or just, just be a part of it. I appreciate you guys. You know, thanks so much for asking me all these questions. There's a ton of great questions. If I didn't get to your question, just next time submit another question. Um, just trying to keep these videos as condensed as possible. Check in the description for my uh, my JLP LUT bundles. I got a good deal going on with um, those right now. If you buy both of them together, you know, all my different uh, video manuals are down there. My GH4 manual, Adobe Premiere manual, um, as well as my original JLP Super Duper um, manual version two. So check all that stuff out, it's in the description. Oh, I really need to hit the gym right now. They don't call me buff nerd for nothing. Gotta keep up the image. And uh, yeah, guys, I appreciate it. Peace, guys.